This is the right groove we need to get into. Good evening. Happy Friday. Live from the ski slopes of Central Texas. I hope you're doing well. It's the grand piano finale. I had too much fun with that pun. I, I really did have so much fun with it. And I'm going to start off by thanking everyone who has already joined us today. Hello, JD. Hello, Wifire. And hello, Rex Verity. Hope you all are doing well. We're rocking to this. We're going, we're going to rock steady through the end of this build right here. Because we are on the cusp. The threshold. The penultimate uh, end to this build. Hello, Holly. And good evening way over there up in the deserts of Scotland. Hope you're doing well, because we're about to go right here. Boom. Congratulations, it's the build board again. There are 21 bags. Guess what? We are on bag 19, and it is building the top to the piano, which means there's going to be a lot of repeating pieces that all look the same. We're going to find a way to deal with that, right? We'll be fine. But with that mindset in place... We are super, super close. And we already have everything set up and ready to go. So why don't we just go ahead and get started? I have really strung us along this far, really built this up. Oh, Whitefire, no. Also Whitefire, yes. <laughs> I want to... In the new layout, I do want to incorporate a pun counter and see if Nightbot or Streamlabs can update it for me as I go. I will have to see if I can get that done. Because I would like for that to happen. So, I'm going to go ahead flip to the next page. I think there's less than 100 directions left, because we're at 758. I think there's like 840 steps. So we're going to go immediately over here. Back at it, because we ended in media res, and we're going to start in media res of finishing this build of the piano. If the Bluetooth part breaks, is it bricked? Oh, oh no, Rex. Uh, uh, <laughs> eh. That's too much. But it is nice to see y'all. Happy Friday. Whether you are getting off of work today or just starting work and having to police the youth as Holly is, I hope y'all are doing well. I had a fruitful, productive week, actually. And... Though I am glad that it is now the weekend, I can safely look back and go, you know what? The week wasn't bad. Good stuff happened this week. So wherever you are, and whatever you're dealing with, I hope you're able to manage. Here we go. Thankfully, with these repeating patterns, it's not uh, too heavy of a burden for us here. There we go. Whoops. We are missing a layer. <laughs> That's okay. We were just so excited to go on to the next part. We already skipped a, we already skipped a level. Look, that's fine. You read the directions from left to right. <laughs> Look, I was just so excited to get this done and put it on my shelf. That indeed, I needed to ask myself some fundamental questions. Like, 
who am I? What have I done? Is this not my beautiful house? Is this not my beautiful wife? Etc. You know the drill. It is a Lego piano speedrun. Hello, Frosty. How you doing? We are at the... We are just coming up right around the, that bend, you know, in, in horse racing, whatever it's called. Right around the final bend. We are galloping to the finish line. Hey, ninja. Welcome in. Yes, the final furlong. Thank you. I was like, the final bendy bit. Unaware of that it was called a furlong. Listen, Rex. There are many things that I... There are many dad jokes that I will tolerate. That's a dad joke too far. Because it actually involves going to Home Depot. <laughs> actually, I do think I need to go to Home Depot here soon. So many friends. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for coming in. What we're building right now is we're building... Um, <laughs> I've forgotten the term for it. You know the little, the flap that sits at the top of a grand piano, the one that opens up and there's, you can see inside? I, terminology escapes me today. The cover, I guess. <laughs> the lid. Thank, yeah, I'm just gonna call it the lid. <laughs> Even if that's not the right answer. I can't believe I didn't make the lid one of my, um, one of my sound effects. Because it's a good sound effect. Um, I'm referencing, uh, let's see, Spongebob. There's an episode where Spongebob is trying to teach Patrick how to be, like, a better person. And there's this part where Patrick can't open a lid. And it's like, the lid, the lid, the lid. <laughs> The only one that I have from there is, I think the, it's the is mayonnaise an instrument. See if this works. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Horseradish is not an instrument either. <laughs> Hey there, Sauce. How you doing? Thank you for stopping by. We are, we are, we are galloping to the finish line here. Whoop, did I plan that right? Whoop, whoop. A three? Yeah, I did. So then what's that all about? Hold your horses. Wait a second. Jacques. There's an extra one that I put right there. There you go. Hello, dweeb. <laughs> Hello, dweebs. <laughs> uh. Yes, everyone, please go follow Sauce. All right. Uh, oh, NBER shenanigans. Okay. Let me see. Let me look up the... Let me... Pull forth the National Bureau of Economic Research so you all can follow along. Let's see, what has been interesting recently? Uh, a bunch of, let's see, a bunch of COVID working papers. There was one that was pretty good. What was it? Um, let me view all the recent papers. Let's see. Um, oh, another working from home paper. I, I, I like these. 
These are pretty good. Oh, so do we want to do another working from home paper or do we want to do one on tax fraud? They're both really good. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's do the tax fraud one because we have not done tax because we have not done tax fraud yet. Okay. So it's called ghosting the tax authority, fake firms, and tax fraud. Tune in for the builds and stay for the tax fraud. So, it is a paper with multiple co-authors, but it's about... So here's the abstract. An important but poorly understood form of firm tax evasion arises from the use of ghost firms, quote-unquote. These are fake firms that issue fraudulent receipts so that the clients can claim false deductions. We provide a unique window into this global phenomenon using transaction level data from Ecuador. Ghost transactions are widespread, prevalent among large firms and firms with high income owners, and exhibit suspicious patterns in comparison to ordinary transactions, bunching at round numbers at the end of the fiscal year and just below financial system thresholds. We go on to study an innovative enforcement intervention that targets ghost clients rather than the ghosts themselves, which leads to substantial tax recovery. That sounds pretty cool. I like that. Dude, have I logged in and confirmed my email address? I didn't actually download this paper. Yes, there will be a test later, Ninja, on tax evasion. So the this group of economists got together, and they're what essentially they're saying is that they went to Ecuador, and they were looking at a form of tax evasion, which is use, which are called ghost, fir, uh, ghost firms. Yeah, suitably Halloween-y. Ooh, that, I didn't even get that connection. Thank you, Frosty. See? It seems more brilliant. <laughs> don't i plan these out like a genius anyway um it looks like what they did is that they were investigating the uh, tax receipts and the um the filings of these firms to see uh you know was there anything suspicious and they were able to identify what a suspicious transactions on these ghost firms are so Numbers in real life for a lot of transactions tend to be uh, not round numbers. So you'll get transactions for, you know, $2.52 rather than two fifty or 3 So uh, you also get instances, for example, where a lot of purchases are suddenly made at the end of the fiscal year. Or you say there's a reporting requirement that I have to report, uh, you know, Anything that I spend with petty cash in my accounting system, you know, I have to record those exact, what the purchase is at $500. It's saying that a lot of things, these companies will spend them at $499. <laughs> so they're talking about an innovative way to detect ghost firms, essentially. And they're saying that the optimal solution is not to go after the firm, but to go after the owners of the firm. It's a very interesting way of cracking down on tax evasion. Oh, they were looking at a certain fiscal year. So let's see. Oh, so they sent out notifications to emails to the ghost clients, challenging their deductions from a certain time span. That's pretty cool. So essentially what they did is that they sent notices like, hey, we think this is suspicious. Uh, did you actually, did you mean to claim these deductions? And it looks like they were able to get back, you know, 90% of the money. That's pretty interesting. So it's, it goes to the speaks to about how businesses take their tax deductions about tax enforcement and about um, different mechanisms to crack down on tax fraud. But I think a lot of people have heard about you know dummy corporations, you know, the what was it like the the Dutch sandwich or the Irish sandwich, which were popular back in the day. This is talking about a slightly different concept. Essentially, these corporations don't exist, uh, but they just incorporate uh, losses, 
constantly, and then they write them off, write off all their losses as you know business expenses. Oh, interesting. The total amount filed. What? Oh, so increase their tax liability going forward. They then adjusted their uh, tax liabilities by up 81%. That's pretty interesting. It's a very interesting paper. Um, we find evident, no evidence that the intervention was followed by firms going out of business or deformalizing. <laughs> so they cracked down on tax fraud without these businesses going bust. Um, ah, and they focused specifically on value-added taxes. This is a very fascinating paper. I like these country specific papers because they try to follow a very specific question and they focus on a very specific country. You know, try, is trying to demonstrate their policy suggestions. Um, so for example, one of the weaknesses of this paper may be because it's from a, it, you know, it's from a, a country with relatively um, weaker institutions, Ecuador. So, uh, for example, in the U.S., the U.S. is actually relatively an outlier because our tax compliance is so high compared to other countries. Like, other comparably developed countries like Germany and the U.K., uh, there's been some research done that says that Americans, despite their, you know, uh, rhetoric about anti-government stuff and being all, uh, you know, don't raise my taxes, are <laughs> we're actually very poor in committing tax fraud. <laughs> it's a fascinating dichotomy, but this one's talking about cracking down on it. Hear about the couple who used a combination of frequent flyer miles, credit card rewards programs, and free balance transfers to some travel for free all in the world, not paying income tax. Oh, that's interesting. Because I know that certain credit card reward systems are basically broken. That you could cheat the system, quote unquote, cheat the system, and uh, take advantage of all these reward uh, reward benefits. Because some of these deals that these uh, that these credit cards offer are, like in cash terms, far in excess of the value of the things that you're spending them on. You're you're getting boons from like you know. Some of these cash back programs or um, frequent flyer <laughs> frequent flyer miles programs are just insane. That whole thing is fascinating to me. But no, I did not hear about that. And then they'd buy gift cards. Oh yeah, this was a famous loophole. Was being able to buy gift cards with credit cards. There's a law. Yeah, there's a law and a limit now. But JD, I found a way. I found a, a little way around that. So, if you buy the gift cards at the grocery store where I live, um, you can't put it on a credit card. But, if you put one small item, like say a pack of pencils, and then you buy an $100 gift card, uh, I get 6% off on any grocery store purchases. Which, as long as I include something that's a grocery store item along with that gift card, it counts. <laughs> So, I could theoretically be be printing money from from this exchange. Theoretically, I have not attempted it yet. So, like the way that yeah, so they're not supposed to let you do that. But the way that you get around it is that you buy something else. Apparently, apparently, this is just a thing with my credit card. You buy something else in addition to the gift card, and then they just all ring it up at the same time. And it may just be, like, a local quirk of this grocery store not realizing what's going on. But I thought that was funny. Because I, I was able to buy an Amazon gift card that way. Okay. So... For all you in enterprising people out there thinking about cheating the system, just, you know, food for thought. 
How have you cheated the system lately? Also, Holly, I like that you are very committed to this one group of your students, as you were commenting earlier. I like that you are willing to go to bat for them. <laughs> it's just market research. <laughs> tried, but the system cheated me. Okay, I think that's one, two, all right, three, okay. Let's go build right to left. Uh, oh, we have another redemption for what's new in the NBR hood. Thank you, Sauce. Give me one second. I'm going to attach... this next layer so we can... get a little bit of a move on here. And then I want to look at the work at the work from home paper. is determined to do build this build. <laughs> As I'm putting this on, um, Holly, I do say that I like the idea of when you say throw hands, my mind immediately jumped to you throwing like, like uh, you know, amputated hands at people to defend other people that you like. So let's go back to live from NPR. It's NBER. So we're back at the National Bureau of Economic Research. Let's see if I can go back here to view all. Ah, another working from home paper. Why not? Gloves filled with gravels almost. Okay, this is from a trio of economists. Let's see. Ooh, this looks quite nice. So they describe that hybrid working from home, WFH, where employees work a mix of days at home and work each week has been a dominant, uh, has become dominant for graduate employees in the US. This paper evaluates a randomized control trial on 1,612 engineers, marketing, and finance employees of a large technology firm that allowed odd birthday employees to work from home on Wednesday, Friday, keep even birthday employees full-time in the office. There are four key results. First, work from home reduced attrition rates by 35% and improved self-reported work satisfaction scores highlighting how employees place a considerable value on this amenity. Second, work from home reduced hours worked on home days, but increased it on other work days and the weekend, highlighting how home working alters the structure of the working week. Third, work from home employees increased individual messaging and group video call communications, even while in the office, reflecting the impact of remote work on working patterns. Finally, while there is no significant impact on work from home on performance ratings or promotions, lines of code written increased by 8%, 
and employees' self-assessed productivity was up 1.8%, suggesting a small positive impact. Given these benefits for retention, job satisfaction, and productivity, after the experiment ended, the firm extended hybrid work from home to the entire company. So this is a good sample size. Uh, there are a lot of papers out there which, uh, <laughs> which rely on sample sizes of, I would say, less than 100 to come up with their grand pronouncements. Uh, you'll find this very often in macroeconomics. So when people are debating uh, macroeconomic policy about should we adopt X or Y system or should we enact X or Y big policy change, usually they work on data sets of like Again, I'm making, I, as an example, 30 observations. Uh, so drawing conclusions from that is usually pretty hard. But they, this group looks like they got uh, the support of a private company to help them out. And so they had over 1,600 employees, which is a fairly big sample. <laughs> but acting like a pilot study. It, it, it's, it is a pilot study. And the nice thing is that this pilot study actually is built to have a decent number of people in the pilot study because you can have pilot studies of 20 employees and it's like that's not good enough so they got a major employer here it sounds like engineering marketing fi and finance so if you had to tear that apart uh you could say that you know that's broadly different functional groups of people in different parts of a company uh you could say that the fact they only looked at one corporation may be a weakness of this paper, but they still had a large sample size of employees to look at. Um, <laughs> I love the fact that they chose the odd and even birthdays. I have an uh, odd birthday. Hank. <laughs> Let's see. Um, what else do we have from here? Uh, turns out that every, all your priors are correct. That, you know, working from home on some days increases your satisfaction. People enjoy that much more. <laughs> and you also have higher productivity. So, work from home. It's beneficial. People like it. There's no impact on productivity. If anything, there's a small increase. Uh, be warned, you may actually work more hours than you think you do <laughs> when you work from home. So, it's a fascinating look at things. I can't look into the future, but I would... My hunch is that work from home is going to become more popular in professions where you can... Where being in an office is not essential. Because it looks like the evidence shaking out from companies is that uh, employees not only like working from home, but and also will are more loyal to you if you offer that option, but work more. Listen, listen, Ninja, all you need are robots that you can control as you work from home. <laughs> Just d use robots and drones. It's all you need to use. You'll be fine. Nothing could possibly go wrong from doing that. Will it cause the singularity? Who knows? One of those segues with an iPad on it. I like that. Is Baymax not real? <laughs> oh, one of the waiter robots with the uh, with the cat face. Holly, my mom. Did I? I think I messaged that. Did I message that to the to the group chat where uh, my mom went out to go eat and she saw this like little waiting robot that had a cat face on it. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yes. My mom loved it so much, and now I'm starting to think, this is how... This is how robots get accepted into service staff uh, jobs, is that it's going to be, if you make them insanely cute, people will be like, oh, I don't want to, oh, this robot's being so nice to me. <laughs> I'd rather have the robot than the person. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where are we going here? I'm going to go here. Yeah, I, 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 my betting money is that Dietz becomes the housewife. Listen, I'm not saying you should take bets now, but my bookie window is open. Oh, Dietz sounds like a really, really good cook. So, you you landed a good one, Holly. Will you watch or read The Way of the House Husband? No. Please. Uh, uh, educate us a little bit more, Whitefire. <laughs> hmm. Nope, that's right. Okay, yeah, good. All right, and then here. Awesome. And then. Boop, boop. Nope. Hard yard because of being, at home, being a house. Oh, that sounds nice. All right, take care, Ninja. Thank you for staying around. Thank you for being part of this madness as we book it to the end. Take care, get some rest. We'll see you back here soon. Okay. Oh, I should have announced this while Nurse was still here, but... Uh, I've got a secret. Do you want to hear? The secret is that uh, I know which game we're going to be playing next week. Uh, I downloaded Myst. Uh, I've actually never played Myst. I would really like to... Play and beat Mist. I am I'm itching for a good puzzle. So we are going to open up Mist and play Mist. Uh, after that, I may or may not play a parody of The Witness called The Looker, <laughs> which the thing that brought it to my attention was the fact that I was on Steam and then I saw that. Uh, John Coffee Robot had downloaded it, and I was like, if this is a parody game and John has downloaded it, I think it's good. So, my sense is that we're going to be playing uh, Mist, and then this parody of those types of puzzle games, The Looker, and then we'll see where life takes us. Watch your profanity.
<laughs> I remember Miss Frustrating the Head. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be very curious to see how it goes. <laughs> and thank you, Sauce. I will watch my profanity. So let's see, we're getting really, really close here. Uh, and by close, I mean, uh, we totally just boobed that, but that's okay. All right, we're just gonna cha-cha slide that off really quickly and then uh, do this. There you go, because those should be level and they were not. That's fine. Oh, there's something else that I really want to play Whitefire now that you mentioned it. Um, or at least I want to see it played through to conclusion. Um, I really need to catch Lore from work when she's streaming at Penny Arcade because I want to see the end of... Um, she was playing Beacon Pines, which if you have not... Uh, if you do not know about, uh, just look it up on Steam. It is a gorgeous game. Uh, you know, like a, a, a... I don't know how you describe it. Like a video game novel, I guess is the way to, to put it. I'm not really sure what, what game category classification that's technically called. But it's... Uh, it's really, really, really fun. It also goes very hard. <laughs> uh. Oh, howdy doody. Here we go. Yeah, it's very much almost like a visual novel, Holly. It is very, very good. 10 out of 10 would recommend. All right, everybody. We're on bag 20 of 21. The bag before the final bag. It's the bagging of the end. Oh, I didn't know Zinga played some of it. Good for Zingit. Okay. Hopefully many of you like the smooth jazz of going into the weekend and this little piano doodly doodin. and interesting things they intend on doing. I'm hoping to see a good friend of mine. Uh, she fell sick over the weekend. So I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, thankfully, it's not COVID. But, you know, just had a little bit of a scratchy throat, and so we were, we were going to meet on Thursday. Uh, so sadly, she could not meet up with me yesterday, but it sounds like she's starting to feel a little bit better, so I was going to go swing by this weekend to check up on her, and then, um, I don't know, we'll just hang out for a little bit. Yeah, I've heard that, JD. There is some form of a flu going around, so that is increasing my impetus to go and grab the flu shot. So I have that booked on my calendar. 
Because if there's one thing that I don't want to happen, it's to, uh... <laughs> to get the flu again. After I already... <laughs> Having caught the flu three times over the course of the pandemic. Not COVID, just, again, the flu. <laughs> uh, of different strengths and uh, bedridden levels. I think I'm finally just going to call it quits there. Like, I'm three and done. I will say that I got the uh, bivalent vaccine booster and I felt kind of not under the weather but I did feel a little tired for the better part of a day but after that it was fine so I didn't have as much of a reaction as after getting the first um the booster at the first like the uh the booster that I got man that I was out for that was out for like two or three days how does it want me to do this? Presumably very carefully is the right answer. Okay. All right. Okay. Come on. Come on. Haha. -ha. There we go. Excuse me? <laughs> Come on. Okay, listen here, nonsense. This should be right. Okay. Should be facing this way. Should be one slight little lip. Or did I do this wrong? Oh. Duh. It's supposed to be like this. Okay. That makes much more sense. Alright. <laughs> you got both your booster and the flu shot, so tomorrow you're going to be miserable. Oh no. Good luck, Rex. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, that's not supposed to happen. So the pieces are not supposed to come apart when you, uh... Attach them all together. At least that's uh, my experience. If you have a different experience, uh, send me a postcard. Let me know. Complain about your Lego misadventures there. My operators are not standing by. is really weird but all right that that was exceedingly weird of why that is very very weird i mean i'll take it but that shouldn't be the case lego you got some explaining to do okay Listen, close enough is good for horseshoes and hand grenades, and I'm just going to live that philosophy right now. That We're just going to take that and run. Tyrant's Lego forms. Sir, I never thought this would happen to me, but as I was building the Death Star... <laughs> You'll never believe these people came by and told me that I needed to destroy the contraption, and then they proceeded to shove this one piece down the exhaust port. And the whole thing blew up in my face. It was very inconvenient. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Ooh. 
<laughs> it's very inconvenient and me and messy. That's the big part. That's the big one, JD. Okay. All right. Oh, interesting. It wants it to go in the other way. All right. Okay. All right. Listen, Lego, I believe your judgment here, but a little crazy. There we go. Okay. Haha. -ha. That meets with success. Okay. Whoop. That's the camera. Uh, I can't put it on that way. Uh, let's see. Like this, I think, is what it wants to wants to do here. Okay. What is with the central little sticky wickies? Okay. That okay, that that was better. Okay. So now we just got to come on. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. <sighs> All right. We're going to We'll tolerate this somehow. All right, so we'll do it the other way then. There we go. Good. Seriously? <laughs> Lego. I'm literally at the finish line here, and you're you're gonna saddle me with this nonsense. Come on, Lego. Lego. <laughs> uh. Dear BBC, I'm running in to complain to you about this recent experience I had with this grand piano. It was made entirely of Legos. I don't expect you to do anything about it. I was just writing in because I'm very lonely. Okay, come on. Okay, there we go. All right. I just okay okay come on what is the opposite of pulling teeth because <laughs> I am not trying to pull something out of here I'm trying to attach something come on come on pushing teeth dental yeah it's either pushing teeth or dental implants okay okay come on come on Oh my goodness. Lego. Lego. <laughs> Lego. Oh my gosh. There we go. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Lego. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is not Lego. This was not the best, the best idea for this. You could have come up with something so much better. Oh my goodness, Lego. Okay, hold on. Dealing with uh, poor engineering, please stand by. Okay. All right. We can get that far. 
This <laughs> this rash of dental implants just does not want to work. Okay, come on. Come on. Actually, you know what? We're going to add in slightly more power here. Okay. I see it. There we go. Okay. There. No. Oh, good. Good. Okay. Good. Before anything breaks. <laughs> Huzzah! We did that. <laughs> that was exactly like um, installing dental implants. Ugh. And now we have to do it one more time. Oh no. Lego. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's just... I... Whitefire, I don't get it. <laughs> it's like, it's causing this gap because... It's, um... Because these pieces are not perfectly spaced out. So I have to admit, this one, this one section is kind of dodgy. <laughs> Ever so slightly dodgy. <laughs> All right, Holly. Come back soon, because uh, we may be done by the time you get back. Okay. Let's see. Here. Oh boy, the same problem all over again. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. Let's see. Here we go. And then what we need right here. Last of these pieces. Oh, yeah. We'll be good. Here. Here. Discard our lovely Tupperware over there. I'm so glad I have a, <laughs> a full bed over here so I can do that rather than everything just clattering to the floor beneath the bed frame. Okay, here we go. Time to attach this little dodgy piece right here. This is, this, because this is slightly dodgy. <laughs> uh, this whole thing is slightly, this, this whole part is just very, ever so slightly dodgy. <laughs> Flashlight again. Let's see. And for those of you who have not seen this being built before, this is just, this is how large the top to the piano is. A good, you know, let's see. How large is that? Uh, a foot by a foot at its longest. Uh, <laughs> spikes the piano into the ground <laughs> for a tip of six hundred and ninety four dollars and twenty cents I would do it uh interesting thought oh did I just put this on no 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 oh did I do it backwards though no I did it right okay good Okay, so what is it telling? Okay, Lego. So what is what strategy do you want me to follow here in order to attach these pieces? You seem to be giving me no clear instructions here as to how you want this to flow. <laughs> oh 
Okay. Actually, that's about double what this piano costs. So, you know, interesting suggestion for, you know, $694.20 I might spike it. I, that's twice the value of this product. So I, listen, whatever fetish you're into on, on you know, spiked piano pieces, uh, you know, turning into, into Legos and then just them hearing the sound of that smashing all over the floor. I may oblige. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can do this. Ah! Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. 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 Somehow that fit. All right. <laughs> now the lid goes on the piano. The lid. <laughs> the lid. Okay. Oh, let's bring the piano back. Oh, our chunky buddy. Okay. Super chunky buddy. This is a chonker. All right. I swear, if these do not attach. Okay, good, they do. There we go, okay. That looks nice and uncontroversial. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a little, there's this little bitty thing in here. It, it's basically, it acts like the stand holding it up. So, okay. All right. We have one more thing to finish. So I'm going to scoot this over here so it's visible to everybody. And that is, it wouldn't be a grand piano without the little miniature stool that the piano person has to sit on. The pianist. None of those have that, yeah, so that's going to be right here. All right. This is bag 21, everybody. these parts. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. I was like, I'm missing some parts. That's because there's an entire egg carton. Hello, sauce. You didn't miss much. I was talking about pianos. Okay, so, we're out, out and about here. I did not place all of my, thankfully I did not place all of my Legos in one egg carton. I just forgot that there was an additional egg carton here. I got so excited, actually, you know what, here. We'll put it on top of our piano for right now. There we go. Where is the doobity doo? I thought I put the doobity doos. There's the doobity doo. Hey, I mean, this is a. This is a good system. <laughs> you only gotta shell out for an organizer like that. Oh, okay, that was, I appreciate that one. I didn't get it, I didn't get it at first. I was, I was a little indignant. I was like, excuse you, this is a good, yeah, now I get it, yeah. I get, I, I, I see the pun there. Took me, it took me just a second.
Okay. Here we go. And then how does this little doobity do? Okay, yeah. Fits like that. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh no, all these little technical parts. I presumably this controls how high up or, or uh, how far up and down the stool moves. The little seat. There we go. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. Isn't modern technology wonderful? Okay. Okay. Lego Engineering really went all out on this. I will. I'm, I have to give them that. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm enjoying this right now, but <laughs> you really decided to go out on this portion. Okay. Let's see. A few of those. One of those. One of those. Okay. I'm actually really glad that we're getting to the end of this because it had been sitting on my shelf for months. Oh, I still need to work on the layout over the weekend, too. Thank you for reminding me. Chat's this just there being all helpful. We do that this weekend. Ooh, tonight I get to crack into my... Uh, or not crack into, I get to... Cut myself a slice. I'm gonna reward myself. I'm gonna have myself a slice of apple pie, which is as a, is as American as apple pie. Oh me, yes. Ain't I a stinker? Chris is going to cut the pie by shooting at it. Hey, if Chris... I would invite Chris over for some pie sauce. I do not consider that a mistake. See, I will let my chat be indignant. I will be let chat be indignant at you. However, I thought that the, the, the sentiment was sweet. <laughs> but as sauce famously knows, Chris and I are the exact same person. This pie sauce, though. <laughs> it might have actually been more appropriate had you confused uh, myself and Deets. But, you know, I think that's just fine. Okay. Oh, okay. This does a thing, I think. It's not doing the thing yet. Oh, I think it's because it's all the way over. Okay. What about this? Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I get it now. Okay. <laughs> Never seen me at the same place at the same time. That is true sauce. In fact, I would say that there could be a Dietz right next to you right now, and you would not be able to, to know it. You might actually uh, be a Dietz.
There we go. Okay. Uh. Okay, it has a very specific pattern it wants me to follow here. Okay. Uh, right. Wants me to build a cross section like so. What if it wants me to do the exact same thing but in reverse? Yeah, it does. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Let's see if we can get this nonsense all situated. There we go. Oh, come on. Come on. Follow the nonsense. Ha! Ah, there we go. Okay. Here we go. Telling me to loop it through there. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. Now that makes more sense. All right. Then, let's move to... This is... <laughs> this is literally too many moving parts. <laughs> this is really hard to keep track of right now. Okay. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Then let's see. There we go. All right. This is this is basically just a form of engineering at this point. Holy moly. Okay. Okay. Uh. Oh, other way. Ah, uh, that explains a lot. Okay, there we go. That explains why. Okay. I think that works. Sort of. Maybe. Kind of. I don't know. It looks directionally right. Literally directionally right, if I'm looking at the directions. Okay. Okay. Where did... Okay, those are the fives. Where are the fours? The four by ones. They're here somewhere. Okay, there they go. Okay. Alright. You return from patrol. Lands and lair are all quiet. 
on the one hand, I mean, boo, no, nothing interesting. But on the other hand, <laughs> good, no drama that you have to deal with. <laughs> Honestly, who wants to fill out all that paperwork? We're working on this contraption. Thingamo, who is it at the moment, Holly? Pretty sure that this controls the height of the uh, of the little piano stool. I'm not quite sure. It does a thing. And yeah, I would also take quiet over interesting. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. What else we got cooking? Let's see. We got a... You smell what the rock is cooking? Oh, yeah. Word. I'm here for that, Holly. Quiet uh, means... Uh, what, what did they used to call that? Um... Refined contemplation. <laughs> Used to be this thing in the classical world, is that what people aspired to? Uh, you know, relax, you know, leisure and uh, <laughs> uh, you know, productive leisure. <laughs> There's work is like work, but okay. Oh, hey, D&D &D prepping on the clock, too. That's good. Now, when you say D&D &D prep, do you mean that you're you being DM, or do you mean that you're prepping for someone else to DM? Yeah, reactive work. That's a good way to put it. Whenever you're not working on Thursday, I'm running your group through Avernus. Oh! That is that is a cool one. Okay, I grew from all the same place. So where did the... Oh, that's where they went. It's like, where did the smaller ones go? Well, there's only two of them, so... Oh, they're... Okay. <laughs> I misunderstood the assignment. That's okay. I finally got there. Oh, that's when you you're. Oh, I did not. I did not even think about that for graveyard shifts. Oh, it's the day that clocks go back. Yikes! <laughs> By pulling strings, I'm gonna call in sick. I do it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's so terrible when I get COVID on Wednesday. Uh, 
What's a little bit of hubris, Holly, if you don't have a good time beforehand? I mean, look, we, we, we built a thing that moves up and down. I'd say with this chill the, uh, piano mute, uh, stream that we've been having so far. Built a small little thing that does a thing. Okay, we'll create two of these. All right. All right. I think I understand the prompt to, to this. Okay. I word from uh, word to yourself for not catching COVID yet. Plus, gives me ample time off to get boosted. Yeah, I think so. Here, the shorter one over here. Okay, I get this. This makes sense. Okay. Okay. Ah, see, now it's turning into a box. <laughs> Plus, I'm going to be working on Christmas, so I feel like I can take it morally. Uh, yeah, Christmas is such a huge holiday for uh, my family that I, I would definitely, I mean, I personally would take the day off for Christmas. Uh, there was last year where I actually only got Christmas Day off. I was actually working on Christmas Eve, which was, um, uh, for me, disgusting. <laughs> I did not enjoy that one bit. So, looking back on the many different things that I did not like about my old job, um, and that I like about my current job, the fact that we are definitely closed, uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, is, uh, is a win in my column. One of those little, like, uh, moral boosts that I'm that I go yeah yeah oh yeah I didn't even think about that Holly you you have, you have a a relatively drama free time on Christmas Off Boxing Day. So you get to see family. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Supposed to New Year's Eve. Yeah, I... I... I prefer to be out with friends on uh, New Year's Eve. That's just me. Okay. Panels of those four... Can we too much miss that on New Year's? Yeah. Alright. Okay. We are coming up on the deadline.
Seems like we are getting closer and closer to being finished. I can just grab this other piece. So this is going to be here, 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 and then we flip it over and just do the exact same thing. I also like the fact that now I get a little bit more in terms of um, uh, PTO. Uh, and there's a little bit more structure to it. You know, actually getting like personal holidays, which is quite nice. Um, Uh-oh. Did I do that right? Oops, I did that wrong. <laughs> hey, look. Life doesn't give a pass out instructions for this. There we go. Haha. <laughs> Having a little bit more structure to choose when and where I can take off. Which was something I definitely lacked. Like, where I used to work, it was. Like, you could sort of take off whenever. Um, and we, we didn't really have PTO, uh, but that also just meant that you could also just be constantly on call, which was a trade-off that, in retrospect, I regret making. <laughs> that trade-off was not fun. Because the, the, the lure is, oh, well, you know, if I don't have any projects, I get to go home early. You know, it, <laughs> if I walk into work at 9 a.m. I can leave at 10 whereas more often than that is like oh I thought that you know if I walk at 9 a.m. I'll be done early today <laughs> turns out three fires started so I gotta stay till nine o'clock at night New Year's Day off is just so happened to schedule your booster on New Year's Eve. So you were feeling so ill the next day. <laughs> hey. Do what you gotta do, right, Ollie? I mean, at least that worked with your employer. When I got sick, my employer got mad at me. It's just like, you know. This thing is so due. Why couldn't you anticipate this? I was like, get anticipating getting sick? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just being like, I don't think you can project manage. Now literally manages a dozen projects at one time. <laughs> <sighs> so glad I left. Literally validated every single day <laughs> after I, afterwards. So nice. build four legs, so. All right. We're coming up on the last two or three steps, it looks like here. Okay. Let's to flip it over, attach the legs, uh, attach the legs, and then attach the legs. This almost feels like a piece of Ikea furniture here. And look, we built a tiny stool. It um, changes height depending on if you do this little rotation thingy. 
That's nice. Ah. The last thing we have is uh, this little song, which I guess is called Play Day. We attach that to an easel. Let's see if we can do that. Whoop. <laughs> Let's not uh, take it off from there. Okay. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, that was the, f the final step. 3,662 pieces. And this piano is done. Let me see if I can go flip the light. We're at the end. Yes, honk indeed sauce. Let's see if I can... Can I take this off the stand? I think I can take this off the stand. Let's try to see if I can do that. Huh. Well, what I could do is I could just take the stand down. <laughs> that may do it. I'm gonna go with that. A nice celebratory honk. All right. Let's see. If I can put add some grandiosity to this. Very nice. Okay. Here it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've done it. Uh, do we want to play it at least once? Whoops. That's a vital piece for this. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we want to do we want to round it out with a song before we before we end today? I think we should. We could. Let's see if I can zoom it out over here. There you go. Okay. So as a reminder to everybody, I'm just gonna set this. Let's set this somewhere, like, right here for right now. <laughs> you know, this is all all done live. Uh, no editing. You can definitely tell. No editing done. So, as a reminder for how this works, there is an app on your phone called the Lego Power Up app. Let's see if I can zoom out here. This lovely guy right here. That will... Uh, turn on the Lego piano, so if I just punch over here, I want to go to listen, for example, we can uh, hook up a song after I turn the Bluetooth on here in the back. Let me just go over there and then show you where the Bluetooth is. If the cord will cooperate with me. Come on, come on. There we go. Back in the back here, there is the little box. That's the Bluetooth box right here. All right, it says that it's hooked up. All right. So I guess the question is, uh, what do we want to play? Because there's, oh, there's Fur Elise. Um, Jingle took a little star, happy birthday to you, Jingle Bells, you know. What are we thinking? Oh yeah, it, moving all on its own is very, very cool. 
I don't know. Um, it's a twinkle, twinkle little star. So I will turn the background audio off really quickly. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I will be here all week. And if we want to watch it play itself, uh, what do we want to do? Let's see. Uh, we'll do the entertainer again, because uh, that, that fits with our theme. And there you go. That's it. So, I think that's the perfect time to call this a wrap. Uh, wow, everybody. This is... This piano is stunning. This has been an amazing build. Thank you all for coming out. I I love this. I cannot wait to put it on the shelf. <laughs> oh, thank you, Saucefire. I appreciate that. Uh, so, let's see. All that's left for me to do is to thank everyone for coming out. And if you like this content, you can follow me at Tyranthosaurus on Twitch and Twitter where next Monday I will be back with Mist. If you want to see me struggle at a puzzle game, uh, I like puzzles. We're going to see how Mist goes. We're in it. We're in it for some fun. Uh, so with that, uh, why don't we find ourselves a friend to raid? One of our good colleagues. Uh, anyone have any suggestions? You're ready for all the puns? I don't know if I'm going to be ready for that. I missed the puns. Oh, Holly, no. That was, that was actually quite good. That was a really good pun.
<laughs> uh, friend of mine is playing a horror game. Uh, sure. Why don't we give them a raid? Uh, what's your friend's name? probably seen him in your chat a few times. Yeah. Mega Mark the Shark 252. Okay. All right. Let's let's go let's go talk to Mega Mark. See if I can get this right. Uh yeah, get your chunky emotes ready because my emotes are still not quite ready yet. <laughs> uh, uh. All right. And if you don't have them, you can get them super cheap for channel points. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming out. It's been a distinct pleasure. Remember, missed on Monday. We're going all puzzly. Remember, the word of the day is actually, it's a, I swear, this is a science term from the Museum of Science. White hole, a theoretical celestial object in which matter is funneled from a black hole. Read into that what you, uh, what you will. I know. See, Sauce, I thought I was going to have trouble with Holly, but no. No, it was you the whole time. <laughs> oh, thank you all for coming out. And I'll see y'all soon. Thanks, everybody.